Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin. Let's talk about loops. Which magnification is the best? All right, well, first let me just say that I used to be really cavalier about loops. I used to use them more just for fun here at home to look at the details of my already purchased watches. But if you're looking to buy a pre-owned watch, these are essential. I mean, this little guy saved me about $10,000 a few weeks ago. Link in the description to that video, but it reveals very often things you just can't see with the naked eye. I know I'm sort of stating the obvious for many of you, but I've bought many a watch without a loop, and um, you really don't need a loop until you do, and you get home and you break out your loop, and uh-oh, right? So which magnification is the best? Well, right here I have a 10 times magnification and this is great and it's great because it offers and i'm using the iconot right here you're able to see all of the details i can see the texture and grain of the dial i can see the loom texture i can, I can see, see the details on the hands any sort of imperfections or dust or debris, and even the transitions of the painted surfaces on the hands to the non-painted surfaces. It's everything you need, all right? And of course, the exterior of your watch as well. The lugs and can reveal whether a watch has been polished or not. Now, this is 10 times. More is better, right? It's probably like beers. I mean, if 10 is good, 20 is better, right? Well, not so, not so. Now, having more magnification power, being able to see in more detail should be a better thing, right? I mean, in theory it is, but in practice it's a whole nother thing. Look at this. This is a 20 times loop, and under ideal situations, this is going to be better, right? Well, here's the thing. Situations are seldom ideal, all right? But if you're in perfect lighting and you're looking at the exterior of the watch, this could be a little bit better, but what about real world scenarios, all right? Well, here's the problem with this. Very shallow depth of field. That's how much is in focus at one time. And shallow meaning it's very thin. So you can pull focus on, for example, the outside of the watch, but then it goes in and out of focus. Well, very easily. And one little section, one little thin plane can be in focus and then just that, you know, few millimeters uh, off to the other side won't be. So it's a little bit difficult to pull focus. That's the least of your problems though because you need to get very close and you block out your own light. Now, I'm looking at the outside of this watch. I'm looking at the numerals on the bezel, the two and I'm blocking out my own light. I can barely see it. It's almost unusable. Now, I'm turned in the wrong way, and I could always adjust myself, but if you're at a jewelry store and they've got that track lighting, you're likely going to be blocking out your own light, and it's going to be very hard to use, if not totally unusable, all right? So you got to get too close, too shallow a depth of field, and here's the big one. Because you have to get so close, you might not be able to pull focus on certain parts of the watch. I was looking at the exterior of the watch. Let's check out the, the dial. I'm hitting the crystal here. I can't even pull focus on the dial. So if you were looking at an Iconaut with this, you'd be able to see the hands, the outside of the watch. As for the dial, couldn't even do it. So the shallow depth of field, the amount of light you need, and how close you need to be makes this 20 times magnification loop unusable. 30 times it would be even worse. So while on paper and in theory this should be better, this is by far the one I rely on. In fact, if I was buying an Iconaut, I'd have to walk out of the store and say, I've got to come back because I can't even see the dial. So a 20 times loop, a lot less usable, but in perfect situations, great lighting and you need to see the exterior of the watch only it could work. Now, this might depend on the actual brand of the loop as well, so keep that in mind. 
10 times magnification, great all around loop, great depth of field. You don't have to get too close. You can pull everything in focus and you'll let enough light in. This is a lot bigger of a lens as you can see. This is my go-to. Now we got the 10 and the 20. Would a 15 times magnification loop be perfect? Perhaps. Let me know what you think about loops. Drop a comment in the comment section. Like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.